Ready? Okay. All right, welcome back. So, yeah, we've been through uh, sending out meta to the uh, self and to our benefactor, to friends, and we worked on neutral people. But we're going to keep that expansion going. And of course, we need at some point to consider even those people that are, you know, difficult in our lives. So people that we have problems with, because for meta to be truly boundless, it needs to encompass everyone. So this is one of the more challenging parts of this practice is how do we develop meta even for those people who may have hurt us in the past or you know people we desperately disagree with you know politicians are a great favorite you know there's um, hor some, some very difficult politicians in the world today you know Putin and his war and people like that so um, you know is it possible to develop meta towards those people now we definitely don't condone negative actions so to develop meta in this regard we're going to really need to use our wisdom and think about it from all the different angles where we can see that you know uh, their behaviors are not the person as we say in NLP so uh, unfortunately all of us us included have done negative things to other people you know under ignorance under misunderstanding under delusion so we think we're help we think we're doing the right thing by admonishing someone or you know whatever it is and then we've hurt them and then people's ignorance goes so far to believe well the world's against me so i have to be against the world you know and you know the world will hurt me whenever possible you know so i'm going to hurt the world in retaliation to get re revenge their minds can get twisted not knowing that in fact it's potentially their projection of those negative uh, you know, sentiments out there onto the world which is potentially causing the world to veer up and hurt themselves. I know that this has happened to me a few times and I've heard it from lots of people that if you walk down the street in a, in a, you know, a, a rough city, a rough city, you're walking along, along the street. If you walk confidently and without bother and, you know, hi to everyone, you, you don't get bothered. But if there's a fear in you that, you know, is someone going to mug me? Am I going to get mugged? Is, is he the right type of person? It's almost as if people get can pick up somehow on that energy, on that fear. And perhaps they think, oh, here's a, I sense that here's a weak person I can take advantage of. And so people with a lack of confidence and with fear in them seem to attract trouble, you know? It's a bit like dogs. They can smell if you're scared of them and then they'll come aggressively towards you. So, when we think about there's definitely this influence that if you project aggression or if you project fear then you're going to get or if you project any sort of negative energy then often there'll be negative energy coming back towards you not to say terrible things don't happen to good people they do as we all know um, but certainly um, you know there uh, we can feel that people who project negative energy they're not living in a beautiful you know loving filled world if they were they wouldn't feel that sense and need to hurt others yeah so 
all of these, and, and there's more. So they, we, again, we've talked a lot about flexibility of viewing, ways of looking in order to bring about the result that we want, which is a sense of uplifting buoyancy of metta. Um, now, as we work with uh, difficult people, um, you know, other difficult people, I'll just reiterate again, um, that sometimes it might be that these people are inflicting great pain on others. And so we need to have compassion for the victims of, of, of their crimes, uh, etc. And when we turn to the negative events of the world, it can easily overwhelm us and make us a little bit depressed. You know, take the example of Putin in his war, causing you know huge amounts of um, suffering in the world. And when we just think of even the smallest fraction of people that are you know living in awful conditions just because of one man. You know, it can drag us down. And we can then have enormous amount of compassion, the Pali word for compassion is karuna, uh, towards those people. And this can be very, very helpful in our practice as long as it doesn't depress us too much as we talked about earlier. So uh, in order to be able to contemplate the sufferings that some difficult people in the world uh, put on, we need to be uplifted ourselves. And so that's why we take our time in working through developing <coughs> metta to those beings that we love in order to give ourselves a sort of a reservoir of energy to fill our batteries, so to speak, so that uh, we're not uh, depressed too much when, when we get to working with people in this way. So that I've already talked about. <coughs> um, so, difficult people. Well, there are difficult people we know in the world from reputation, and then of course there are difficult people that we know firsthand in intimate relationships. And so another form of difficult people is, you know, people that we know, and how easily people can slide from category one or category two down into sort of category five uh, very quickly. One minute they're a good friend and then they say something and it's like, oh, right, you know, uh, you can jump down a few categories. So uh, we're, we're working on some of these and there can be a lot of history. So this can be uh, quite a stretch. And I guess one has to really sometimes pick uh, carefully who we work with and it might be wise to pick someone that you have minor disagreements with first to see if you can develop a sense of metal towards them. Some of us have had practice in this area and it's, it's quite a right to, to deal with even the most difficult people in our, in our life. So that's really a, a choice that you really should, should um, make. And then in developing uh, uh, a sense of metta towards them, we actually need to develop a sense of compassion first for their own suffering. And as I've discussed, they themselves have to be suffering, otherwise they wouldn't do those things to the people. People who live in bliss and happiness and love, they just don't go around hurting people. So just by, you know, just by the knowledge that it's almost like a law of the universe that one has to have uh, both suffering, fear, worry, uh, you know, suffering, a, a sense of, you know, being hurt somehow, the world has hurt you, and an, a sense of ignorance to think that in order to help myself, I've got to inflict pain on other people or force them into my ways of thinking. And very misguided you know people like Hitler thought he was uh, creating a, an Aryan race a better world for everybody by exterminating the people he saw as unfit to have at birth and, and 
genetically you know, engineering or whatever a, a race which he felt was you know, better and kinder. So in, incredible ignorance um, in, in people's minds. So they, they have to have both of these things. What they don't know is we can't, it's impossible to hurt others without being somehow it coming back uh, on, them, on themselves. So if you believe in the law of karma, every action causes a reaction, you know, that karma will uh, catch up with them at some point in the future. But even so, it's twisting your mind more through hurting others. And those twists are going to play out in, you know, in the long term. They need to be uh, ironed out and purified. So we can see that and we can see uh, an idea that I like is that, you know, in everybody's mind, there is a poison and, and some people, their, their poison is so great, it's the actual poison in people's mind that is causing them to behave that way and not uh, the inherent nature of themselves. And again, this is where I guess it depends on your own spiritual belief is whether you believe the inherent nature of life itself is kind and is loving, in which case you have to say that you know somewhere inside this person there is a uh, you know there is a uh, there is a life force that is inherently good and 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 will come out under the right circumstances. Right, so in working with difficult people, we need to look at it from all these different angles that they themselves are suffering. We have to look at the equanimity to realize that they are a person and therefore by definition, they want happiness and want to avoid suffering themselves and that we're all equal. Um, and you may want to sort of try to look at it uh, from the point of other people. So for example, we might dislike this person, but perhaps not everybody does. There are people that perhaps love them. Um, and so look at it from their point of view, particularly if, you know, it is someone that maybe you had a, 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 a relationship with in the past, you know, you would, there would have been kindness towards them at some point in time. So you might want to try to remember back to a time when, you know, you did feel a sense of kindness towards them and what their good qualities were at that time. And think, you know, they still have those good qualities. You can even potentially see that the very qualities that cause them to hurt others are can be viewed as good qualities in certain circumstances, but it's just that they've been twisted to, to you know, create havoc in this world or create damage in this world. But in other circumstances, for example, being forceful and forcing your will on someone else is damaging, but it can also be uh, uh, a good force if one stands up for one's rights and what, what one believes in if that causes to help others. So the same sort of quality can, uh, if directed into a healthy um, direction, can be a good quality, even though a dogmatic approach of my way is the best way, if directed into a selfish um, direction is very destructive. And um, I'm sure that you've done other work uh, on, on other angles to sort of see uh, this this way. So um, we'll be working uh, with difficult people in this way. Um, sometimes negative emotions like anger can arise. Uh, and so if you can't see through that anger, uh, we need to sort of come back to ourself, either give meta to ourself, so see if we're a victim, give meta to ourself, or else you might go back to what we were talking about before and see how anger itself is created. See how there's a physical manifestation. Where is it uh, you know, coming in the body? So sort of move away from the object, the difficult person, 
and move on to the, the physical feeling of the negative emotion in your body and try to let it go at that level. Okay, so you might, and or you might want to go back, may I be happy, may I be safe and protected um, that way. And then another suggestion, and this is really for all categories, instead of saying may you be happy and may you be peaceful or may I, you could actually say may we be happy and may we be peaceful. So be inclusive right from the start. So that might be a direction um, that you move in. All right, and you know, it's good if you, um, you know, practice with difficult people, maybe finish off coming back from the difficult person to someone else as well, sort of at the conclusion of the practice, maybe coming back to self and wishing oneself uh, metta sort of uh, to conclude the practice and then remain in the, you know, meditation on the energy body for a little while before you finish the meditation. So that's it. So in general, of course, we will uh, try to establish metta. So you want, might want to go back to one of the earlier practices we did to get that feeling of metta and, and feel that sense of uplifting before you move on to the difficult person. And then we'll work with the difficult person, keeping in mind the energy body and watching, you know, uh, really your response and being very wise, being very you know, intelligent in your choices and not letting the mind uh, really take control and move off into storytelling and making the drama, etc. Any questions in dealing with working with difficult people? Mm -hmm. We can give, yeah. Any, 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 any questions on this, uh, first of all? Nothing kind of. All right, we'll, we'll stop the video. And then, yeah.